Hi and welcome to this tutorial on pivot tables. This is going to be an introductory on pivot tables. We're going to look at setting up a pivot table, how to insert pivot tables. We're going to look at pivoting the pivot tables and the field lists. We're also going to look at formatting the pivot tables and we're going to look at pivot table filters. So what is a pivot table? Well, Pivot tables are a means to sort, organize, and do reporting on data sets without the need for complex formulas such as lookup formulas and arrays. With a pivot table, data can be pivoted and moved very quickly to show the analysis that you require. You can see from the screen images here that there is a data set that can be sorted quite quickly with the screen image there of the pivot table. And you can take a data, a data set that's fairly meaningless in the format that it's in and turn it into a very useful report very quickly with a pivot table. So the best thing to do is jump straight into Excel and have a look at this. Okay, here we are now in Excel and what we have in front of us is a data set. And in this data set, we have the dates, we have the products that we're discussing, we have the sales rep, we have the region, we have the cost price for the product, we have the number of units sold for the product, we have the sales value, and then we also have the profit. And we have this for um, some data for 2014 and 2015, so we can make some comparisons. Now, this data set is not very big. It's only 82 rows long, but you can use pivot tables for data sets that are much greater than 82 rows, and you can also use the new power pivot function for rows that, great, that are greater than a million. So let's have a look, first of all, at how you actually insert a pivot table. There's a number of ways to insert a pivot table. And the first way I'm going to show you is with the use of the keyboard shortcut Alt-DP. And Alt-DP will bring up your three-step wizard for a pivot table. So that's Alt-DP. And what you get is this three-step wizard. Where is the data that you want to analyze? So it's a Microsoft Excel list or database, which is correct for us at the moment. It's an external data source, or it could be multiple conditional ranges. What sort of report do you want, a pivot table or a pivot chart? And then you would hit next. It's then looking for the data set, so you can highlight the entire data set. And then hit next. And then it is, where do you want to put the pivot report and you can put it into a new worksheet. Now I'm actually going to cancel this. I'm not going to insert the pivot table this way. The next thing I'm going way I'm going to show you to insert the pivot table is with the keyboard shortcut for the one step wizard is Alt N V. And this will be your one step wizard. Now, this basically has the three steps that you've seen in the last one, but built into the one dialog box. So you select your table or range. You can use an external source. And then you choose where you want the pivot table to actually be placed. Now, I'm going to cancel this again. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to insert a pivot table from your ribbon bar. And in your ribbon bar, if you go to Insert, and you have two options here. You can insert a pivot table, and this is going to bring up your one-step wizard that we looked at a second ago. And in Excel 2013 and higher versions, you can use recommended pivot tables. And we're going to click into recommended pivot tables for a second. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with pivot tables, the recommended pivot tables is a very good option to actually begin with. Because what this will do is it'll give you a visual of how the pivot table will actually look for you with the options that it's given you. And it gives you quite a considerable amount of options of ways to summarize the data. And they're all built in and they're ready for you. Now, you can also do a blank pivot table. And a blank pivot table allows you to start from scratch with a pivot table. Now, I'm going to delete this blank pivot table. And I'm going to go back into my pivot table sheet. So we're going to use the one-step wizard. And as I said, the one-step wizard, the keyboard shortcut is Alt 
NV or from the insert ribbon pivot table. So here we are in the one step wizard and we're going to fill this out now and we're going to start building some pivot tables. So we have create pivot table, select a table range. Now Excel has correctly identified the range that I want here because I had the active key placed within the table. If the range is not correct, you can manually highlight the range by just clicking on the cells and dragging, or you can also use the cursors. You can also select an external data source for your pivot table data, and you can choose a connection. Then you want to know where do you want the pivot table to be placed, and I'm going to put it on a new worksheet, and I'm going to say OK. And what we've got now is a blank pivot table. Now you've seen this screen a few minutes ago when we went into the recommended pivot tables and at the bottom of the recommended pivot tables there was an option to insert a blank pivot table and that's what you could do from there. So what do we have? Well we have drop row fields here, drop column fields here and drop value fields here. Okay and over here you have your pivot table fields. Now what are the pivot table fields? Well, the pivot table fields are identical to your actual row headers. So these fields here match identically to your row headers on your data source. Let's go back into the pivot table. So we want to put items into our pivot table. So what we can do is we could actually drag by right clicking and holding and dropping across this way. Now when we dropped this in here you will see over here in our rows product has jumped into our rows. We can remove it by unticking it. We can also re-add it by ticking it and we could move it from rows to columns. This moving from rows to columns and moving it data in and out to this effect is called pivoting and that is why these are called pivot tables. So let's have a look at building some sort of report that has some use to somebody. Let's have a look at our sales rep by region by profit. So we want, we'll get rid of region out of here. So the first thing we want is our sales rep. So we have our sales rep in and I've done that by just ticking the sales rep button. The next I'm going to put in my columns is going to be my region. So you will see there the regions has now jumped up into the pivot table. So now we need a value and the value goes in here, drop value in here, but you can also put the values in down here. So we're going to put in profit. And what this has done now is this has pulled in the sum of the profit for each sales rep by each region. Now you will see when you have put in your pivot table that you have these little filters here and you can turn on and off items and filters and we looked at these filters in our tutorial on tables and I explained to you at that stage the filters are also used in other data sets and one of the other data sets is pivot tables but you can apply filters to any data set that you want. Now when we put our value in here what we did was, and if you see over here, sum of profits, we put in the sum of. You can change the value setting. And to change the value setting, I right click, value field setting. And in here, you'll get a new dialog box. And what this dialog box allows you to do is summarize value field by, and you could do the sum, you could do the count. Let's count how many sales they had in each region. And that will change that to count. If I click again, you could put in the average, the max, the min, the product. There's a lot you can actually select in there. Now, while we're in here, what I'm also going to show you is I'm going to show you show value as. And the show value as will allow you to add certain calculations like percentage of grand total and select OK. So this is now showing you the percentage of the grand total. So the grand total for all the regions is down here is 100. This particular rep, Allison, has a 17% grand total, which is broken further down by her actual, 
actual region. Now imagine trying to get that yourself using other calculations. It would take quite a long time to be able to pull a table together like that, but with the use of pivot tables, it's actually quite easy. Now I'm going to back, go back in there and I done right clicked on the actual pivot table there and I'm going to go back into value field settings and show value as and I'm going to just put that back to no calculation. Before I put it back to no calculation you can just see there the other options that are actually available like running total in and percentage running total and so forth. So the value field setting built in um, calculations are extremely useful and my advice would be play around with them with the workbook that you have and get used to using these sort of formats. So I'm going to go back to no calculation and I'm going to just click OK and that's brought that back to no calculation. I'm also going to change it back to the sum while I'm in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some date in. Let's take the sales rep out and let's put in the date. And now we have the date of the sale, the date of the profit per region. Now you could have quite a lot of dates here and they're actually coming in as individual dates. And let's say you wanted to group these by month. Well all you have to do is press right click and press group. Now the good thing is Excel knows that you're working with dates and you don't fully need to know date math to be able to sort things by date in pivot tables. So it is saying it's giving you an auto grouping type which is starting and ending and you could do it by months or by years. Let's select by months. So when we select by months it has sorted our data by January or February. Let's just go back in there to the group. Now I know I have two years in there. I have data for 2014 and 2015. So when I selected month what this has actually done is it's actually summed the January of both years together. If I wanted to see both years I would need to have to also click years and select OK. So now what we have is 2014 and then we also have 2015. Let's pivot this table a little bit more. Let's take, let's take all of this out for the moment. And this time let's build a table with sales rep by product. And we want the cost price and we have the sum of the cost price. Now we can see there in this that we have some digits to three decimal places. Let's say we wanted to format these cells. Well if you click in the, within the table and you go back down to value field settings and in here you have number format. So let's go to number and let's just go to two decimal places and select OK and then select OK and the entire table will then update for you to two decimal places. What we're going to look at now is analyzing and design the analyze and design ribbon on our toolbar now. So we have now been given two new ribbons. We've been given a design ribbon and we've been given an analyze ribbon. Now in our analyze ribbon we have the ability to name the table. We can change this field settings in here. We can just basically move things around the table. We can refresh, we can change the data source, we can move. So the analyze ribbon is quite useful for quick access of items. The design ribbon is also there and the design ribbon allows you to select different designs for your pivot table and there's quite a lot of built-in designs here available for you to show your pivot table but I'm going to keep with the simple format pivot table that we have here. So now what we're going to do, what we're going to look at is the report filter and we're going to filter this report by region. So I'm going to take region and I'm going to drop it into filter and you'll see up here changed to region. What this means is I can now filter this report by the region. So by selecting this I can just pick on cork and it will change the pivot table to only pull in the data for cork. Again I could select multiple items 
and it will give me the data for them items selected. So the filter will allow you filter further filter your pivot table by an additional criteria. Now when you have the report filter on, if you go to your analyze tab and under options, you have show report filter pages. I'm going to click on this. And what this is going to do is you get a new dialog box, show all report filter pages of region. We have region set in as our filter. And what this is going to do is this is going to build and you will see new worksheets after opening up in the bottom of your workbook for each of the filter. Now this is very, very useful for if you have reports that you wish to distribute to your sales reps that you can just print as per the report filter highlighted. So that is an introduction to pivot tables. So I'd like you to use your workbook and I'd like you to create some pivot tables yourself using the same data set that I have used here. It's very important that you get hang of building and actually pivoting your data in the format that you want it to come in. Thank you. Goodbye now.